Hello, everyone. Today we will continue to look at the Red Hat System Administrator Certification Question Bank. Today, this is question 19, and the requirement for question 19 is to add a swap partition. Currently, there isn't one in the system. Here, we are asked to add a new swap partition. So first, a swap partition is actually a relatively special type of disk partition. It is also created step by step from our hard drive. So, the overall procedure is actually as follows. First, partition the disk space that is currently unused. After allocating a certain size, what do we do? We create a new partition. Then through our exchange partition. Use the initialization command and for the formatting command, format it once, first, then add the swap partition to the startup file. Uh, this is our overall process. Ah, generally speaking, when we mainly add partitions, it is usually with some ordinary partitions or logical volumes. As for the swap partition, yay, when do you use it? It's actually when you are. When you didn't create a swap partition while setting up the system, that's when you would use it. You could say that generally, if you follow the system's default requirements, there will definitely be a swap partition. Including logical volume partitions, these are all created by default at night. If they are not, how do you add them? First, our minimum requirement is a size of 512 MMBs. Uh, there's only this size requirement. Nothing else, right? Nothing else. So let's start creating. So first, the first step is to check our current disk status, which we just looked at, right? In the previous task, we checked the disk status, right? This one can't be used, right? This VDVE definitely can't be used because it has already been used as our logical volume, so it can't be used. Now below this, there's a traffic issue here, right? Currently, the system has a default one. We won't use this. We need it. The task requires us to add an additional new transaction partition. In this case, the entire VDB disk actually can't be used. The disk can't be said to be completely unusable. There is still some space, right? There is some space left. If you want to use it, it's not a problem. You can use it. You can use the size check. The size check can be used. Everyone, please note, during the exam, pay attention to whether your disk size is sufficient because the task requires 512 membody and the current total is 5 gbody using less than one gbody so it doesn't affect and can be used. So here, let's go ahead and create it. The first step is that we need to use a command to partition it. First use fdsk followed by the disk name under dv vdb and press enter. After entering we need to create a new partition. First use n to create. The number is 3 because we already have 1 and 2, right? VDV here has 1 and 2, so this is the third one. Then press enter for the starting sector. The ending sector, which is our size. The size here is 5 on 12. Go ahead, you can literally write it like this. Here it says the value exceeds the limit. If the value exceeds the limit, it means there's not enough space. Let's take a look. Hmm. Exceeds the limit. Just add approximately 512 megabytes. Ah, oh, this will certainly do. You know, just fine indeed. For the version 9 system over here, over here you can't directly write a symbol. You need to add something up. How much do you need to add? Pay attention here. You add as much as you want to create a partition of that size. Once it's created, you can check it directly. This is the current partition situation, right? The first one is above. The second one is already in our system. And the third one is the one we just created. Make sure there's no problem. After 512 megabytes, save it. Exit. Okay, after coming out. Let's take another look. Ah, this is the situation. We can see that, as of now, our 5 and 12 MB partition has been successfully created. But how do we turn it into a swap partition? Because a swap area is quite special, right? It's actually considered a special type of memory. Yeah. 
When the memory is insufficient, we can use the space in the swap area to help store some data. So here, first. The command we need to use is the format command, which is slightly different from other format commands. It's mkswap, followed by our path. That's all you need to do. Okay, directly format it, and then edit. We edit the fstab file under etc. Here, if you want to use the UID, you can copy it down, no problem. What does this mean? Once inside, we need to add this disk, right? Add the disk partition and its corresponding path. Relationship. This is the location for automatic mounting. If this file exists, every time the system starts, it will mount content from these files. It will mount the content inside. So here we, this must be written here if you don't write it. If you don't write it, you won't get any points for this question, not a single point. Because if you don't write it, after restarting the system, this partition won't be mounted to this directory. And at that point, it will report an error. It will be wrong. So here, we first. Our disk uh, or partition is actually VDB. Three. The type is swapped. Ah, but to be precise, it's actually mounted as swap with the type being swap. The third is the type, the second is the mount point, and then you can just write the rest as default. There's nothing special to pay attention to. Okay, after writing, we save and exit. Since we haven't restarted yet, you can see that it's definitely not mounted here. So what do we do? Well, we can use swipe or here, we can refresh it. Reload it or... Then we use swap all to check it. Well, this is our new 512 MB swap partition. Of course, you can also use free. H screen you can check, right? The issue here is that it only shows a total amount. It shows uh, the total. You see here it's 754 adding up exactly. So what is this? This is our... The creation of a swap analysis, what do you need to pay attention to here, you need to be aware of? Firstly, the most important thing is actually our file, because if you don't correctly configure and write this content into the file, it will be gone the next time you restart. So it's also necessary to restart our server B. Uh, it's also necessary to restart if, let's say, if you have completed everything, of course, we still have two more tasks to do, but we'll talk about it after finishing, if you have completed everything. In that case, you must restart server B once more. Whether it's server A or server B, we need to restart them after restarting. Let's take a look at this. Check whether the disk or partition is still mounted to our uh, interactive partition. If it's there, then there's no problem. If not, you can redo it and check again. Here, let's take a look. And Spock. You can see here, right? It's also up, correct? It also has this symbol, which is in addition to our Java analysis. The most important thing is to ensure that the FSDB directory under ETC is written correctly. Yes, it must be written correctly in that file. If it's written incorrectly, then this task won't score any points, none at all, even if you make a serious mistake, it could cause the entire system to fail to start. This is no joke. This file is very critical, and if you write it incorrectly, if the entire system cannot start, then you will fail the entire exam. Ah, if you think your server B cannot start, then you won't get any points at all. Ah, this is a point that needs attention. Everyone must be careful not to write it incorrectly. This is part of our content on adding exchange analysis. If you need a complete question bank, you can leave a comment below and purchase the most stable question bank at the best price. So today, we'll stop here. Goodbye, everyone.